What you're about to see are passionate, dedicated, and trained people practicing and preparing to enter an extreme sporting event that may change their lives. Do not try this on your own without necessary experience and supervision. Breathe in, breathe out. This moment's what it's all about. Want to be great, your golden way. Don't hesitate. Accelerate. Set for the race, aim, aim to give it all I've got. Mind is set, gonna reach the high spot. Working hard in order to fulfill my goal. Nothing can stop me from getting what I'm going for. That's being great. I was working till it's late, so I won't hesitate. Gotta get to first place. Hands on the gold plate. I concentrate. Won't hit the brake. Just move forward. Accelerate. Welcome back, Accelerators. It's awesome to have you with us on another exhilarating journey. Last week, we saw 11-year-old motorbike racer Slade Van Eekerk compete in two classes, the NSF 100 and the CBR 150, in which he was up against some of the top riders in the country. His final points got him closer to reaching his dream of becoming the world's MotoGP champion. You go, Slade! Today we catch up with nine-year-old figure skater Toli Lang as she gets ready for her interprovincial figure skating contest. Will she be able to impress the judges and glide away to a podium finish? Ooh, let's find out. Today is a competition. I'll be competing in a hunting interprovincial competition. The objective of this competition is to qualify to go to the South African National Championships. Today my category is Juvenile Girls and I'm going to be trying out my new program. Because we skate so late in the evening, we have to relax, eat healthy and try, and try to not be like all over the place. Three hours before the event, we put on makeup and we do our hair and we get ourselves clean and we, as the last thing, we pack our stuff and put on the dress. The dress that I'm wearing today was designed for me to be pretty and colorful. Hi there, my name is Ayanda and I'm a designer and I designed Tolly's dress tonight, in fact her costume and it was inspired by the Pink Panther but we didn't necessarily go for the pink as people would expect. I used a baby blue and a lime green infused with some glitter and some bows and lots of um, volume for her tutu skirt. So first she gave me the brief and the brief was that she wanted to go for a costume that um, resembles the Pink Panther. So I thought, okay, bow tie kind of vibe, and I gave it some straps along the front. And I thought, we don't want to be um, usual, we don't want to be cheesy, so we're not going to do pink. And she doesn't like pink, so we chose uh, the color baby blue and lime green. And yeah, the costume was fully uh, inspired by the pink pasta. If I have a competition or a national, my whole family has to come. They just won't refuse not seeing me skating number one fan. I follow her wherever she goes. I take time off to make sure that even if it's during the week and she's got a competition, I'm there. I sometimes when Toll is falling on the ice, I'm like sitting also like this, but and I'm I'm, I'm scared that she, she, like especially if it's a competition and she's skating and she falls, I'm scared that she's hurt herself and you know she's trying to be brave to finish to finish her program. Um, yeah, so I don't like it like when she falls too much and... <laughs> First we have a warm-up of ice and then we have a warm-up on the ice. You chain off ice to stretch your body and make it warm. So when you do training on ice, your muscles are already warm and you don't strain it. So on the ice we practice our jumps and spins and some of our choreography. My coach is Dino Quattro. My coach is very fun and funky when I do everything right and listen to him. And when I get everything wrong and fall on my jumps, 
he can become a bit strict and shout at me. Tolly, stretch your arms, please. Do you want to do another double salsa in the woman? I think you need to after that four. Okay, control the takeoff. Left arm in, please. Don't let them go wild. Come on, gentlemen. Half turn, then pull. No. Come on, do it properly. It depends if you do the jump good, then he says go to another jump. And if you do a bad jump, then he gives you the advice what happened. We only have six minutes to warm up on the ice and we have to do all our jumps and spins and some of our choreography. The double jump is the most hardest jump in my program and if you fall on any jump, you get half a point deduction. very hard to successfully land because if just one part of your body does something wrong you'll fall on it and if your body is fully ready for landing your jump then you will land. The pressure is just phenomenal and if you can't deal with that at a young age um, you're never going to make a figure skater. For me it's mentally it's one of the most difficult sports you have to participate in because not only do you have to be physically strong you also have to be artistically inclined and you have to be mentally able to handle the challenges that... So for me, it's one of the most the toughest sports out there. Today is a really important day for me because I want to get a good score so I can go to the national championship. Today is a competition. When I'm skating and my parents are there, I feel more pressure because I want to show them that I'm the best skater. Just as can get you, have got trees. Little ones. <laughs> okay, so let's take it off, set your arms, give the juice with the comp. Come on, baby. Skate nasty. And five. Give it a five. Today I'm skating to the song Dream a Little Dream of Me and the second half Sing Sing Sing. And I chose that music because it was fun and funky. My first jump is a single axle. My 
second jump is um, a flip, a single flip. The hardest thing in my program is my double circle. It's a jump where you have to jump high and rotate two times in the air. And my spins are a combination spin of camel spin, sit front, upright, and back upright. My third jump is a, a combination of LUTs and a single axle. And then a single flip loop. Last jump is a double flip loop. And my second spin is sit side and to sit back. Oh, totally. After my routine is finished, I skate to the middle of the ice and I curtsy to the judges, and then I turn around and curtsy to the audience. After you've curtsied and your um, program is finished, you can throw chocolates and flowers that are have to be covered, because otherwise the pistols spread all over the eyes. And then there's fairy girls that skate on, and then they um, come in and take the gifts and give it to you. Really? Okay. And falling on the sit spin and falling on cross surface. How silly. Yeah. That's silly, silly. Well, this was with us. I'm glad to took the south back. We're the wrong way for the south back. It's fine. After my skate, I feel so many different emotions that I can't relate to and pick a specific one. Um, as far as Tony's performance tonight, it wasn't her best performance, but it certainly wasn't any disappointing. disappointment. It's a new program, so we want the judges to um, get a feel for the program and also for us to see what it's going to be like for the rest of the season. Um, I'm not sure where, where she placed yet because we haven't got results yet. That'll be done later on. I'm happy. Um, the coach is never happy. The coach is always not 100% happy. They get they can get happier and certainly Tolly will need to improve on a couple of things, but I'm happy with the way she's skated tonight, but there's definitely still room for improvement. When are you going to learn to stand on your feet on crossovers? Eh? It was really silly. No, I think the most silly was the sit side. I think it was silly when I came on the ice. I think it was silly that you forgot the program and went the wrong way. Yeah, I didn't. I just, I just, I just went that way because I, I felt confident. Oh, okay. As long as you know what you're doing, that's fine. Huh? I, I, I won't lie to you. When Tolly is competing, I get very nervous. And this time I was clutching on, I was hold, hanging on to my husband like this, you know. And then I, when she skates, because I know her routine, I'm like sitting there and I'm jumping with her. And, and when she falls, I, yeah, I, do, I do feel it. But if I can see that she has a fall, where she knocks a hip or a, a knee. You literally want to run onto the ice and just take her off the ice and carry her home. It was an incredible skit and I think she did very well in it and she felt great in it. And so her performance was just very complimentary to her dress and the other way around. So I have watched many of the performances and I must tell you about today's performance and how they compare. Well, totally improves by the day considering the amount of time she spent on ice in the past three weeks. I think she was amazing. Yeah, I've seen her grow from strength to strength. I think uh, for any figure skater, it's important to balance your life. I think it's important that you not only do figure skating, but it has to be your primary um, supporting objective. If you are doing, concentrating your interests on too many sports, you're not going to get the results that you require with figure skating, because figure skating requires a lot of dedication, a lot of time, and, a, and it requires 
commitment from both family members plus the child, plus the school, plus everybody has to be involved for a figure skater to work. With um, Tolly, we seem to have that balance quite well. She's very autistic, she has a lot of autistic interests, which definitely translate well onto the ice for her. Um, her key focus is figure skating, because she knows where she wants to get to, and we know exactly where where we'd like her to get to, and obviously the ultimate goal is to get to World Championships and possibly to represent South Africa at the Olympics in future years. But we're still very early days, and it requires um, a lot of work involved from both coaches and parents and skater to get that child to where we need to get her. I think because these are small children, Tolly is nine years old, so you can't be just saying, okay, now we're focusing, you're gonna do figure skating. You need to have that balance, you know, sometimes play with your friends, you know, or have a sleepover, or go painting, or go swimming, you know, so that, because if, if, if I have this theory that if you, if, if, if it becomes too serious, you lose a bit of the joy. And if you don't have a joy of skating, you will never succeed. After my skate, I went to go play with my friends. And um, before the prize giving, I got ready and put on my skates. So after a nervous day on the ice, Tolly managed to skate her way to a third place finish. Well done Tolly, remember you're a winner and winners don't give up. My next competition is the Cape Town Interprovincials and I'm really looking forward to it. So the score that I got in Pretoria was 15.80. So I made it to the international score so I can compete in different countries and maybe one day I would like to compete in the Olympics for South Africa. After the break, we meet another extreme athlete who's well on his way to achieving his dreams and aspirations. Stay right there. Welcome back to Accelerate. We're about to check out James Thompson and see what it takes to become a motocross racer. Let's check it out. When I'm 10 years old, I stay in Haldefontein and I live with my mom, my dad, my brother and one of my friends. I started motocross when I was three years old. Got an electric motocross bike for Christmas. And why I started, because my my dad and my brother always used to ride and always used to want to do it. And then when I first jumped on, um, I really enjoyed it. And then that's it started all from there. My future plan is to go to the motocross Grand Prix held in Europe. And hopefully in my first year I can get a top three and hopefully in my second year I can go for the title. The race I'm preparing for is a Mayfair Gearbox Round 6 event. I have a chance of winning the title first year, so I'm going for that. And it's better than the Nationals, uh, in my opinion, because there's money involved for even the junior kids. And it's well more prepared, and so I'm looking forward to it. I'm the youngest in the class, so it's very unpredictable if I can win it or not. When I'm on my bike, I feel rush, adrenaline, very competitive. I don't like being behind people because of all the rocks and the dirt and stuff. That's why I like racing from the front. This event is important to me because I can get attention on more teams and maybe sponsors. Winning means not everything to me, even if we just playing on my scooters or something, I'll, and we're just riding for fun. I'll try and 
come past this oak so you get scared so I'm very competitive. I'm not a sore loser. If I don't win, I'm not bummed. But if I don't win with not even trying, I'll be mad with myself. I don't have any fears about the sport. Sometimes if there's like a, quite a big jump and I, I don't want to hit it, somebody has to tell me if like, they can be joking, but I'm still going to do it. So they can say, if you don't jump it, you're not going to, you're walking home, then I'll have, then I'll go and jump it. I'm sort of a daredevil. How much time I spend on my board per week? I have to go sometimes to the gym, like maybe if it's holiday, and then I ride twice a week, maybe three times. How I prepare this, my body for the race, I go to my trainer, Dylan Jacobson, from 2-on-1 Training Solutions, and he will get my body to do what it can do. The way I prepare for this race emotionally is to watch other riders that are at the level that I want to get to and see how they prepare, so I'll try to do the same thing. The biggest lesson this sport has taught me is never give up and um, patience. My inspiration is my my dad because I've always been riding and I've always wanted to do it. I think it's uh, the, this event for James is not as pressurised as, as some of the bigger events so he can go out there and just have fun and, and really enjoy himself which is it's important. Um, I think if one becomes too serious about the sport you know, it becomes a job and it loses the, the fun aspect. James is very determined, he's very committed and he never gives up. If James crashes in a race in the beginning, he is guaranteed to win because he will not give up. If James wins the event, I'll be over the world because he really shouldn't be winning it yet. If I win the event, I probably will win the championship, so I'll get the money. If I don't win this event, um, I won't be bummed because I've given it all I have got, so it's just going to make me prepare much better for next year, and I've still got two years in the class, so it doesn't matter if I haven't won it. Tune in again next week where we will continue to see how James prepares for his upcoming event. And we will also meet another accelerator who's taking on some awesome waves. Don't miss out. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for more news and views.